how's it going everybody and welcome back to the channel now a little bit of time's passed uh, I didn't see you last month because there actually wasn't a whole bunch to do uh, we just sort of tidied up a little bit made everything a little bit nicer around the place so today we've got grass to sort out again but our first job is going to be selling the silage so let's have a look at where that's going that was not what I was expecting this early on so we've got a load of silage to sell and we're going to the biogas plant so let's tag that one I'm pretty sure we need to go the other way for the biogas plant out of here and left and it is here BGA grain nope okay Supermarket fast food, grain mill, no, 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 where is that then, it must be here, manure, small petrol tank, no, no, that one again, Oh, it might be because we don't own it. We'll go to the auction centre just to play it safe. We know where that is. I'm pretty sure because we don't own the biogas plant, we can't use it. And I've got no way of getting down there without taking everything. Because I don't really want to unhitch. So let's head down there. And what I'm hoping out of the sale of this... I did sell the crusher because we owned it but it's not something that we are going to be using this early on in the game or at all for that matter on this playthrough a fieldstone requires uh, a lot of power and a lot of time and this early on especially this early on where we do not have the finances for the equipment to really make it worthwhile <clears throat> although we have enough land and we're only going to get a certain like we won't get stones off the grass fields so that limits us to our th current three crop fields we might well keep two grass fields the a fermenting silo has actually still got grass in it and this is our second trailer that we're taking out we sold another trailer wasn't quite full at the end of last episode so I definitely think we won't be using field stones on this particular playthrough but we will use it in future playthroughs because it just Oh no, 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 I've missed that turning again. Right, we'll turn around at the dealership. Too busy talking to remember where I'm going. We'll just swing in the dealership and turn around. It's a good turn around pot. Pot, spot. And hopefully we get a half decent amount of money out of it. We see we are still slowly paying off that loan as well which is great our mortgage on the land so it is a one it's not that one it's the next one which should be just before the grain mill I'm hoping yes it is here this is the turn in we need. That is a nice little farm just here on our right. Nice little yard there. Might be a good future yard for us. But we are at the sell point, so let's get some money behind us. We shall back in. I, it's a real shame that the JCB isn't a little bit more powerful. And I do
do need to get a way of spraying the weeds off. So that is empty. Money is going up. Fantastic. So I would like to be able to get a weeder. There's nothing in the second hand market for us. And they are. I'm pretty sure it's going to cost us a pretty penny. <coughs> yeah. It's not something we can really afford right now. And we are probably better off with a second sprayer because these can do weeds as well. It shows just here herbicide and liquid fertilizer. So we might have to just live with the weeds for now. But we can afford more fertilizer, and this is proven really quite fruitful. Uh, it's 200 pound per, well, nearly 300 pound per thousand liters. We've got 125. So this should, it's, a, it's a good sizable income. So we're going to be around about 20,000 pounds. And I would ideally like to upgrade the JCB as well. Although it is more powerful than the New Holland. As our main karting tractor. It does struggle a little bit on the hills. Even when the trailer is empty. And that is another thing we need to think about, is we've got harvest coming up. We did, unfortunately, miss the time to put crops in the field that we ploughed. But that's okay, we'll leave it dormant. We'll get some lime on that later on. And get it all fertilised up. We'll get the maximum possible field state we can out of that field. And there we go, 30, call it 32,000 pounds after the ooh, environmental score impact. I think that is a pretty good income. That's going to keep us floating along for a little bit. The Another thing I'd love to upgrade is the mower. It uh, definitely isn't really suitable because we could get a mower that swaps. And we wouldn't need to run a windrower after that. So that might be an idea as well. If we could look for a swathing mower. We'll just get that beacon on. I have noticed uh, during editing that I haven't been using the beacons as I should. And it is something that I feel I should use more often. So we'll head back to the farm and we'll have a look at the mowing options for us because we are going to be constantly producing silage as much as possible I might stagger our two grass fields so we'll do one this episode and one next episode in the next game month just to keep us busy and that means we have one month free of doing grass at the moment but we will be looking at expanding our land in the not so distant future. I'm hoping probably by Christmas, by December, I'd like to own a new field. Preferably a big one. That would be fantastic. But here we are back at the farm. The JCB is great. It is nice and fast. It gets us around the map nice and quickly. But like I say, I'd just like something that's a bit more powerful. Oh, don't hit the silo. For getting us around the map. It would just tow trailers a little bit better. I'm almost at the point where I think I'd rather use the Fiat. Although it's a slower tractor. Oh, we don't want to feel that actually. I'll turn the beacon off, otherwise we'll end up with a flat battery. So let's have a quick look at the mowing options. If we go to this one and go down to mowers, we do have a few options here. This is what I was thinking, is this mower here, it does automatically swap as well. So it makes life a lot easier. And we will get some money back off of our current mower. 
we look at the combinations the header is not very expensive with a four and a half meter spread so I think we should buy this 10 mile an hour absolutely perfect we'll go for the original and original colors and that one <coughs> We don't need a weight. Shouldn't require a weight. So we shall buy that as well. We can't get it with PTO, which is a shame. Because then we could run the forage wagon on the back. Uh, now we need a way of moving it. Rather, typically, moving it is probably going to be the biggest issue. So let's find the low loaders. And we could opt for something like this. I think the header is a little bit wide for the road at four and a half meters. And that is not too expensive. We'll opt for the Macaulay one, I think. And we go for standard ramps at 13,500. So hopefully the money we get off the mower should give us the money for the trailer. We'll take the JCB obviously as our main road tractor. It is realistically the only option to take. The mower's in here now. just at the back here so we'll get that hooked up as well I have stripped the front weight off the New Holland just so that we can use it for other things if we need to and let's go and look at our most recent purchase I suppose I'll see you as soon as we get to the dealership and here we are just pulling in like an absolute lightning bolt and we'll drop the mower off just here it should be in the section that we need it to be in and we'll get hooked up to the trailer so we can get this all loaded up lovely lovely there we go And there we go. So look at this trailer. It is fantastic. Nice and spacious. We've got tie downs on it so we can pick up other things like bags of seed and all the rest of it. The inside of this, very basic. But I suppose we don't need it to be all that fancy. Just try and get this lined up so it's as easy as possible to hook on look at that beautiful and get this onto the trailer well that's going to prove an issue because it doesn't actually fit I don't think oh wrong way doesn't fit at all uh, let's see then if we go to is it going to be in mowers or in headers let's just find the header there it is and go to combinations so there is only one option there so we'll turn that off and we need to drop we don't require that trailer just yet so that will also be sold off again We'll get it all painted up and repaired. 13.6. Perfect. And we'll back that trailer in. And we'll take the slow drive back to the farm. With the new mower. It does have a number plate on it. Which is great. 
jump into JCB and move the trailer back into that zone. There we go. So a bit of a waste of money, but a test that was somewhat required nonetheless. And we'll leave the JCB just over here for now, out of the way. And get that trailer sold off. So we didn't lose a huge amount of money, about £600 just for the experience. And I guess I'll have to walk back for the JCB. Because we are definitely... I don't think we'll need it... Ooh! Quite today. But I do not want to leave my equipment sat around in places that we do not own. It is not very good if we do that. Uh-oh. Oh! That is tight. Unbelievably tight. Oh. Oh. It, it's, it's bum clenching tight. That is. Very much makes you suck your bum hole in a bit. But it is road legal. And it is getting us back to the farm. You never know, we might pot lucky and save up enough money where we require a new tractor and maybe realistically we should get rid of the new Holland first. That might allow us a second sprayer as well and then we could get rid of the new Holland and ask them to deliver the sprayer. Maybe because we no longer need a tractor for mowing and we kind of use the Fiat for most of our field work so it might make sense to let the New Holland go but I can almost guarantee that if I did let it go I'd be like oh I wish I had that tractor just to move some bits around or do something Maybe we'll look at how much it's worth and go from there. I don't know, maybe we will think about that over the next month or so and go from there. I have got a plumber turning up today to install a jet wash. Thankfully, finally. That way we can clean up some of the equipment. And we do need to get rid of that windrower actually, so... This this does swath. It makes nice neat lines. It doesn't leave it all over the place. So we might have a few extra lines. But again. We won't need to windrow. We can just go along and collect. We'll keep this very snug to the hedge. I hope it fits through the gates. If it doesn't fit through the gates. I'm pretty much screwed. We'll try and squeeze it through that gate just down here by the barn. I know it'll fit through those doubles. So hopefully... Hmm, I don't think it will. It doesn't fit. That's okay, there is a way, no, there isn't actually a way to get through. I think I'm going to have to phone up a contractor to move this gate. So I will get on the phone. And again, I think, I think we'll keep the wind rower just to see if we can make good use of it. It's not very wide, Is the issue I think we're going to have it's not quite wide enough I'm hoping the jet wash can go in here obviously we have our mixer so that is handy we can use that for moving that gate so I'm going to go and make some calls in the house and hopefully a contractor can come out 
fairly quickly to us. This is a bit of wasted land. Maybe we can get a chicken coop out here. But we'll wait and see. I will see you all once I've spoken to the contractor. Okay, so I spoke to a contractor and... Well, basically I went in the construction menu, clicked on the gate. And I have accidentally deleted every single gate on the map. And I can't find a gate in the construction menu to replace them with. So although it makes life a little lot easier, it also opens the pathway to vandals, which is not so good. So let's just hope that we don't have any issues with vandalism. But we can get round this field now. and get all the mowing done nice and easily we have easy access into all our fields which is great as well so we can just get on with the mowing and this is not struggling one bit i was gonna i was just about to say oh i've spoken too soon but i haven't so that is great so oh god look at all those weeds we kind of need to do something about that. That is quite... We will, it will end up as quite a large loss for us over the whole field. I think it's about 10 to 15% loss of yield. So i definitely like to get that sorted out. But nonetheless, we are mowing more efficiently now. We don't need a windrower as such it would be very nice if we had a PTO on this then we could collect behind us as we go but we do not have that luxury and those are two fields that I would really like to purchase since they are right on the edge of our land not sure how much they are. I'll have a look once we've done this first headland. And this doesn't hold a lot of diesel either. So hopefully we don't spend all our time at the fuel tank with this filling it back up. But if that's the case, then that is the case. Even though it's a John Deere, not a case. But that is far quicker to picking up the grass or for picking up the grass should I say and that is the first headland done so ooh, we'll just plonk this over here out the way switch it off fantastic piece of machinery absolutely fantastic and I'm pretty sure the forage wagon is going to have no problems sliding over all of that. So let's have a quick look at the fuel prices for those. And we go up. And so the fields we're looking at are two, 300,000 pounds and 271. So we're not going to be affording those anytime soon. Uh, 29 might be a good one. Oh, that's not too bad. Obviously, fuel prices do change as well. 63 and 160. That's a good field, I think, that we might well buy in the next few months. We'd like it to be harvested first. We do not want sugar beets. We really don't have much use for them. And there's literally nothing left in there, but we can't move it either. So, let's... Can we run that on the New Holland? We'll just try and run the forage wagon on the New Holland, which is here. And see if we can do that. If we can't, we'll probably take the New Holland down to the dealership. Come back with the JCB. We'll see how well it's going to run it. If it doesn't run it all that well, then 
it's definitely going to be worth us going to pick the JCB up. And like I say, I'm still not sure whether or not to let this tractor go. I'm quite fond of it. It looks quite good. It drives absolutely amazingly. But this little uphill section here is going to be the decider for us. And it's not struggling too much at all, so I don't think we need to get rid of it. But we do need to bring the JCB back. And we do need to really sort those weeds out. That is going to bug me a lot. Which would mean ideally a second sprayer, but I suppose well, we can always change the number plate on one to weeds and the other one to third. Then we can tell the difference between the two and park them in two different places. That will make life a lot easier as well. And then we can keep the herbicide behind one and the fertilizer behind the other one. Keeping them in two different barns would be a saving grace. But the New Holland's not struggling really at all pulling this. So they definitely still have use for it on the farm. And it does allow us to get probably a bigger trailer for moving all the silage that we are going to end up with. I mean, on our first lap, we're probably going to end up with about 20,000 litres. So that is really quite an impressive figure, really, for a first lap. And we haven't done anything to this field. Literally, we've done nothing other than mow it. And it definitely could do with fertilising, probably liming, and all those wonderful, wonderful things. is struggling a little bit actually but it's not too bad it hasn't exactly taken a huge amount of time to skip round this field and the money is coming in quite nicely we could literally probably sell the New Holland and buy that field 17 with the sugar beets in but we've got no way of harvesting sugar beets and they are very expensive to harvest. So 19,500 litres off of the first lap. We'll just pour that in so we can keep that production ticking along nicely. I have also got somebody turning up today to put a sign on the silo. That will tell us exactly how much is in there. wonderful so that's all switched off and let's I'm gonna walk down to the dealership and come back with the JCB and hopefully somebody's there that I can talk to about some more equipment but the question is do we need the wind rower we've hardly used it and I'm, I'm just don't think it's really worth keeping personally but I think that is something we're going to have to decide later on there's a bit more space over there to walk along so I'll see you once I get back to the farm with the JCB and then we'll get on a time lapse and get to mowing oh, I just got back and the plumber was here fitting a jet wash and he couldn't fit it over there because there was no water so he's put it over here because we have water in this barn and the person the sign man has been as well and fitted the sign for us so we can keep an eye on what's actually going on with the silo and i have used the jet well the plumber cleaned at the jcb just to make sure it was all working properly 
I then cleaned the forage wagon and the New Holland, which has come up amazing. Everything has come up so well. But we got to get on with mowing. We need to keep that silo as full as possible. So we will jump into a time lapse. And I'll speak to you once we're sort of done with this field. Or well, we are done with this field at least. At least with the mowing. We're going to mow both fields. And then collect both fields at our own leisure. This mower is absolutely fantastic. I cannot get over how much more, how much easier this is compared to the way we were doing it before. I'm still undecided about the wind rower. We might end up with a bigger one if it's sort of plausible. We should get around about fourteen thousand pounds off the old one. So it might well be worth getting rid of it. Give us that little bit of boost of money. Obviously we have got a mortgage to keep track of and pay off. But I'll see you after. I think, looking by how many lines there are, we are going to need to windrow this. But I also feel like we need a bigger one. That's going to be my excuse. We need a bigger one. Uh, this can go into here if it fits through the door. Lovely. And look at that. Look at that. Zero point turning. And there we go. Oh, I'll leave it up then. So that can stay on there, but I feel like we need a bigger one. It might be more of a want than a need. But I definitely feel like we need a bigger one. This is nearly ready to be filled up again. So that can be done later on today. 
Um, yeah. So let's have a look at the wind rowers and I'll see if there's anything I like. And I have found one I really like the look of. And we've got it on finance just for now because I don't want to spend too much money when I know that we need to get a harvester coming in so we've got it on finance just for now which is going to save my bacon a little bit we're going to once we've got harvest out of the way we will get it paid off but until that point we will keep it on finance <clears throat> the dealership were more than happy to do that See, we spend an awful lot of money down there. Ooh. Oh, sorry. I'm pulling out whether you like it or not. So we'll head down to the dealership and pick up the new wind rower. I have also noticed that I think I've got a bit of a mod conflict with the fuel usage because that mower did a tank and a half and it really shouldn't if it had done about a tank that would have been fine but a tank and a half over a nearly six acre field i think is ridiculous so after this episode i will go through my mod list and you might well notice the fuel usage change a little bit because i think i've got it set to normal and <clears throat> well at the moment even this tractor is burning over 200 liters an hour and it's just not realistic I think it should be more around that uh, once you're sort of at speed 10 to 15 liters an hour on the road maybe even 20 to 25 and we are nearly 10 times that in fuel usage so it is pretty ridiculous right now and is definitely ooh, a bit drift eating into the profits of the farm so we're getting rid of the Kubota wind rower and we have got a Kubota wind rower funny how that works um, even the new Holland should run this it only requires 110 horse an RA4513 and we will get the other wind rower fixed up and sold as well as you can see the difference is really this has two wheels this has four wheels Looks far more impressive much scarier much easier to kill yourself and actually we've ended up with more than 14,000 17,000 pounds which is excellent it leaves us a grand total of 49,036 so we'll get this back to the farm and that will be all for this episode i'm going to drive back solo i think and i thank you all very much for watching this episode and i really hope you've enjoyed it and i will see you all in the next one